Hey everybody, Aaron here, back with another video. Today we are finally moving on from DC, at least for now. We're going to take a little break from DC, and we are doing a LEGO Avatar review. This one's from The Way of Water. This is set number 75576, Skimwing Adventure. We've got 259 pieces with this one, two minifigures. Let's go ahead and take a look at those figures because I think they're pretty cool. Here we have Tonowari. This is one of the new Avatar, I guess, Navi tribes. So he's got a lighter skin tone than the regular Navi we're used to with the darker blue. This one has more of like an aqua color to him. Brand new tail pieces for these Navi figures. I still consider them brand new, even though those original Avatar sets came out in October of 2022. These faces have, I guess, some talk about them. A lot of people are either crazy about the faces or really, really not happy with them. The biggest argument I hear is that these noses, given that LEGO minifigures don't typically have noses, look fine until you get to the side where it's just completely flat. I personally don't have a problem with it. I think it looks fine. But other than that, this one should have some printing up here for like his tribal ranking feather collar thing that he wears. Unfortunately, that's absent on the figure. And he also uses the same hairpiece as some of the other Navi, which kind of stinks because he's supposed to have like a man bun on the back. Other than that, that's just how you'd remove the hairpiece there. His accessory is just this spear piece with some translucent blue on the tips. And that actually came out pretty cool. And here we have a look at our Jake Sully figure in this set, and actually only Jake in the wave. This one comes with the military vest print, which we don't have in other sets. And I guess if you've seen the movie, it makes a little more sense why he's not in so many of the sets. He's far less of a focus in this movie. Uh, same thing with Neytiri. But nevertheless, this figure's pretty cool. I like that they found a way of changing it up just by giving him the vest. And the face print is actually pretty cool. If you look on the nose and right around the eye area, those dots that glow on the Navi's faces actually kind of shimmer on the figures. So I just thought that was a really cool detail and I'm a big fan of how that came out. There's just a closer look at the back. This is kind of just what he looks like without the hair. Before we actually got into the skim wing itself, I did want to go ahead and take a look at the two side builds included with the set. These are both, uh, I guess, coral wreaths reefs <laughs> and this is what the first one looks like this one's actually pretty cool because the whole idea with this is that it includes one of those dc cmf um little clips there or rods that clips in with a stud at the end and we actually get some really nice colored uh parts here so if anything i know a lot of people maybe you don't like avatar are picking these up as a parts pack so the whole idea i'll show you that in a second with that reef but first, let's go ahead and take a look at this one as well. And it's actually got a fish attached to it, which is pretty cool. Those pieces there in purple, the flower piece in like a pinkish lavender color, more purple down there, and that super, super bright green. And there's how the fish is connected. The whole idea with this one is that you're supposed to take Tonawari or any of your Navi figures and just attach them like that to where they look like they're swimming and that's the effect that you end up getting. And as for this little section here, this pin here is just gonna go in the bottom of your skim wing. And the whole idea is that it just attaches in the bottom just like that. Once again, this is just how both of those look once they're actually mounted on their stands. It's a pretty cool little effect that they got. Not only did they manage to make it kind of a play aspect or environment building aspect, but also made it to be a little display stand. So that's really cool to kind of factor in something, maybe for adult collectors purchasing the set. Here is just a close look at the skim wing itself without a stand or anything else attached, just going around the entire thing. So you can kind of get an idea of how this is built. I actually think this came out really nicely, considering it's definitely a living creature and not some type of robot. I think they were able to utilize a lot of curve pieces and just curves in general to kind of get this organic look to it. That's really nice. Specifically going down the sides here, you'll know what I'm talking about, where they kind of round off each surface with a very nice smooth piece. So this doesn't look robotic or mechanical like we see with a lot of other creatures that are made of bricks. 
such as one from the first wave. We'll get to that Thanator in another review. But as you saw, the mouth opens really nicely. This is a new mold for these avatar sets, and this just clicks really nicely. It's kind of a satisfying click there. It just clicks open and close, so that's really nice. The head itself is just on a ball joint here, so you can get a nice range of motion uh, down, up, left, right. It can do it all, which is really nice. Here's just a closer look at that print. It's actually really nice going down all the way from the top of the head to the nose to the side there, and the eye on both sides is kind of this metallic gold, which is a really nice color. Each wing, or I guess fin, would be attached with vinyl opposed to actually being brick built, which most of the time I'm not a fan of, but I think they work really well here to kind of get this thin flap uh, idea illustrated, being that again, it's an aquatic creature, so I think it looks really nice, and you get a lot of nice uh, detailing here that maybe we wouldn't have been able to get if it was brick built. So this is definitely an acceptable look for me. I think a lot of the model looks really, really nice despite it having joints that are just visible. But if you get these displayed at the right angle, the joint shouldn't really be a problem at all for you. Uh, you could see this one's on a ball joint. And this one is more of like a Technic fin, which I think came out nice. It's just on a hinge there that you could kind of turn to the left or turn to the right just to get even more detail. You can make it look like it's swimming. Um, that's a really, really nice job on Lego's part with that. Here's the area where we'd mount a minifigure. The box shows Jake doing it because the idea is that he's training in this scene. But you could, of course, put either figure up there and I'll go ahead and show you that now. And here's how Jake looks attached to there. You could just bend the figure forward. I actually have the hairpiece attached, so he's making the bond, just like in the movie. That's a really, really neat feature on Lego's part. Here's just the underbelly of the actual model. Again, I like that it's a different color to wear, even if this part is showing, which if you're displaying it how they show you on the box, it will be. I like that this doesn't look super mechanical looking. It's really nice that they remembered to do a separate color for the underbelly. These flaps are pretty cool as well. There's also these hinge sections that are just on these ball hinges that allow for so much range in motion both in the back section, as I mentioned, with that ball joint, and these clickety-clackety ones right here in the middle section. Those can also be pivoted up or down to kind of get super crazy curvature. The wings could be posed either up or down, both in the front and the back. They can spin forward, pivot any which way. So super, super great range of motion with this model. Here's just a closer look at the wing section, just so you have a little bit better of an understanding how those are actually attached. They're all on these little ball pins that just connect into these Technic holes right here, and the same can be said for the ones on the bottom. And here's just a look at the box. Here we have the front. There we've got the right side of the box, the back, left side. There's the top and the bottom. Here's just a closer look at the instructions. It's that super horrible, boring white border that we have on all LEGO instructions now with the 3D render. Something that I really like throughout the instructions is that you have a little Navi on the bottom that's running to the end, and the pictures that they include from the actual film are absolutely beautiful. We just have an advertisement there on the back for the other Avatar sets. Okay, so after taking a look at everything included, I think we can begin to make some sort of a final verdict, definitely in my case with this set. I think $35 at the price point is still too high for what's included. It is probably my favorite set of these new ones that have come out, but I still think that $35 for 259 pieces is a little steep if you're a price per piece person, but even outside of those general parameters of 10 cents per piece, I think this could have been a $25 set. Really, back in the day, this would have been $20, but I think $35 is too high for what you get. $30 even maybe would have still been kind of pricey, but at least the larger pieces of the Navi molds and the actual vinyl wings and the mold for the skim wings head itself would have made up for that. If you could get this set on sale, I would definitely recommend picking it up. Or if you're at some type of store like Barnes & Noble where you get like a 10% uh, discount, this would definitely be 
a set you'd want to get. Just for me right now, I'm gonna say that the set is overpriced at $35. For this to be the second smallest avatar set out of the entire theme, and still be $35, I guess really says a lot about how the sets are priced overall across the theme. But otherwise, I really, really like the set. I love that it's a display model. I love that you could still get some play for kids with all the articulation, but there's definitely a sense of collectability here, given how they give you a stand for your minifigure to be displayed and a really nice stand for your actual skin wing to be displayed. I mean, they really didn't even have to include that. And I feel like the set still would have sold just as well. It's that little itty bit extra attention to displayability that I really respect for this set and across these sets in general in the theme so other than that guys that's all i've got for you today i really appreciate you checking out this video we've got more reviews coming more lego avatar reviews coming so just stay tuned for that thank you so much and i'll see you guys later